Morning. Okay. Nice to see you all. We, um, so the, uh, there's a few of you that are joining us on Sunday for the first time, maybe joining me on Zoom on, for the first time. Um, morning, Karen. All the, all the things, right? Uh, any props that you need, blocks, maybe you've ordered them on Amazon by now or made them yourself out back, or have a coffee table, or a chair. Hey, Burns. Um, so gather all that stuff. And then also the setup, um, the setup um, of your camera as well, um, so that I can see your practice, if that's why you're here. Um, as beautiful as your knees are, and as much as I like to see your legs straight, it also helps to see your whole body. Um, so feel free to move back or move the camera away. Awesome. Okay. All right. So 2020 just keeps getting better, huh? Yeah. There you go. Okay. I. Some of you may have heard me share this little story before, um, and I, because I think it's, it's, it's a perfect um, story to illustrate some of this, some of this stuff and the path and, and, and the way we want to approach these things. Um, it's a story about Gandhi. Uh, I wasn't there, I've heard it sort of, you know, I mean, second or third or fourth hand, but um, I'll do my best to get it straight. There was um, a, a, a mother who had a, a young son. I want to say the son was seven, eight, nine years old. And the son really loved sugar, right? He loved all things sweet and he could never get enough and it's all he wanted and when he didn't get it, he freaked out. Um, and there was nothing, I mean, his mom tried everything, um, bribing him, Re refusing his requests and hiding it and he always, the kid always found a way to eat sugar constantly and it was becoming a health problem, right? Um, we know this if we eat too much sugar and she was sort of at her wit's end. The young boy, um, his young boy's hero was, was Gandhi. He is, uh, I mean, when Gandhi was doing his thing and um, the boy uh, admired Gandhi, Gandhi was his hero and the mother thought if anyone can get through to him um, it would be his hero, it would be Gandhi. So she'd heard that Gandhi was set up in a nearby town and was receiving um, people and, 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 and teaching and speaking and, and listening. Um, and so she, one morning, gathered up her son and they took this you know, hours long trek. They walked from their village to this nearby town and took them hours in the, in the, in the heat. Um, to get there, and then once they got there, there was a huge crowd, and they had to wait in line to have an audience. So a couple more hours in the heat, lining up. And then finally, she got to the front of the line, and her and her son were given an audience, uh, a private audience with Gandhi. And I mean, she laid it out for him. She said, listen, um, Gandhiji, um, you're my son's hero. Um, I believe he, would, he wants to follow in your footsteps. He admires you greatly. Um, and I'm having, I'm struggling with him. Um, he won't stop eating sweets. All he does all day is eat and want sugar. Uh, I've tried everything and I'm hoping that you will tell him to stop eating sugar um, and, and, and that will maybe be the solution. And Gandhi sort of took a moment and she could see him sort of contemplating and thinking and his answer was, okay, come back next week. Come back in a week and I'll speak to your son. And she was kind of like, what? I mean, she was a bit exasperated and, and, and disappointed, but I mean, respecting um, Gandhi, she said, okay. Um, and so they left, they went back to the village, took a long walk back, and we had another week of the kid eating sugar constantly. And they did the whole thing the, the following week. And they got up early in the morning, did this hour long walk in the heat, um, stood in line again for hours, finally got to the front of the line and um, got their audience with Gandhi. And she started to say, do you remember us from last week? I said, and Gandhi said, of course, of course I remember you. Um, 
thank you for coming back. And he turned directly to the, to the young boy and said, listen to your mother, stop eating sugar, it's not good for you. And the boy said, I mean, beaming, because he you know, had this audience again and was, and was talking directly to Gandhi, said, of course, Gandhiji, anything you say, I'll stop immediately, I'll never eat sugar again. Um, a, probably don't believe him, I'll do eat sugar the next day, but um, what the mother, mother was kind of torn, she was overjoyed that he, she, I mean, Gandhi had said this to her son and it looked like it was going to work. Um, but she was also a little bit annoyed. And she, so she said to Gandhi, I mean, we were here last week and you, couldn't you have said this then and saved us the second trip? And a um, little bit of annoyance in her voice. And Gandhi said, wow, I mean, last week I was eating sugar every day. So who, who was I to tell your son not to eat sugar? So I took the week, the week I gave up sugar, um, I felt so much better, um, and now this week, from a place of honesty and integrity, um, I can teach, I can lead. And for me, this illustrates the need to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk, and to do the work. to do our own work in our own hearts, in our own minds, in our own souls. Maybe before we walk, I mean, before we talk the talk, but certainly as we're, as we're doing this work. And so personally this week, um, I've been listening, I've been reflecting, um, learning, working to understand, um, if I've learned anything, it's that I still have blind spots, like most of us do. Um, I still have a lot of learning to do. Um, my understanding is not complete. Um, but I'm certainly trying to do the work. And that's all we can really ask. Yeah, so maybe we'll spend a few more minutes here at least. Perfect time to turn inwards a little, tune in, and see what we're working with. And if you've been involved in this work for any amount of time, you probably already know what your sugar is, what your blind spot is, where the work lies. So maybe check in with that. A few more moments to make sure we're grounded, get grounded, feel supported, feel connected. And from that connection, because of that foundation, we can grow, we can learn, we can lift, we can energize, we can do the work up through the spine, broad shoulders, relax the brow and the jaw. Maybe take a few deep breaths. And as you do that, tune into the quality of the breath. And for me, this work has always been to land in and learn and live the truth that we are one. All things are connected. There is no other. Whatever that means to you, wherever there is separation within or around you, wherever there's a disconnect. That's where the work lies. That's going to look different for each of us. This path to wholeness, to oneness, to understanding, to healing, it's very personal and personalized. Our whole society is built on a story of separation a 
of otherness, of us versus them. And we see it even in what's going on in the world today. There's a fight for justice, a fight for equality, a fight for... Right? And as long as that fight is there, there is otherness, there is us versus them. And that is understandable. What we're seeing in these fights is the karma of the story. Of course, we're in the streets and angry and fighting and setting fire to all these institutions, to each other. This is simply a product of the story of separation. And if we want real, lasting, sustainable change, where this story needs to change is in the hearts and minds of each of us. And that's the work we need to be in. Sharing the means is great, right? Sharing the resources and voices is a perfect part of this journey. Joining in the protests, if we can, is powerful. But at the end of the day, if we want lasting change, we need to do this work in our own hearts, in our own minds. That's why we're here this morning. Where within you is there separation? What part of yourself are you fighting with? Where within yourself have you set up this us versus them? And know that your work, this work, isn't just in this journey to equality for all and justice for all. It can be anywhere that we are pushing back or, resi or working with or healing this story of separation, whether it's sociological or ecological, right? The desire for healing of the earth is the same healing that we're doing on the streets today. So where does your work lie? And it's the same, this work within ourselves to heal ourselves and feel whole and complete within ourselves is the same work that we're seeing on the street. few moments to reflect. And I know you've got a lot to reflect on. And as it comes up, it's not going to be comfortable. And that's a good thing. How do you respond to these uncomfortable spaces, to the discomfort of coming up against the effects of the story of separation? What do you do? Do you look away? Do you make jokes? Do you double down on what you know? Do you bury your head? Do you react? Or are you listening? Are you letting it be heard? Are you receiving the messages? Are you receptive? Are you willing to be wrong? Are you willing to be taught? Do you really want to understand? It's a tough question. Maybe you bring your hands together, your thumbs to the center of your chest. Holding with 
in your hands, whatever it is, whatever your work is, whatever your pain is, whatever your discomfort is, whatever your vision or dream might be, perfect place to set intention, return to the God of your own understanding and frame it as prayer. I don't know about you, but I can imagine, because I've encountered my work very clearly this week. If you need support, we're here for you. We have satsang, good company. For this journey home, back to this ancient story of interbeing, of oneness, of peace. So we aim high and we aim higher. It's possible, it's happening. Send all that out with the sound of three ohms. Join us and let it wash over you. Wherever you are, exhale completely. Go all the way to empty. Take a unified breath, a full breath in. And we pause in a smooth, complete breath out. All the way to empty every time. Pause again. If you're inclined, when you're ready, three ohms, inhale. here to turn really specifically to your breathing, to rearrange your seat if you need to, grounded, lifted, broad, effort without tension, relaxation without dullness, and turn to that ujjayi pranya. And we're regulating the breath with the back of the throat, so we draw the breath deep from deep. Abdomen, upper abdomen expands as we inhale, contracts as we exhale. We know this. To draw diaphragm down as we inhale, dome diaphragm up as we exhale. As we inhale, we go all the way to full. Maybe spend a moment or two there. And as we exhale, we're going all the way to empty every time. Exhaling more, touch the bottom and then back to full. And then finally, adding those little pauses in. Go to full and just float there. We're not gripping, we're not holding the breath, it's just a pause. And as we exhale and go all the way to empty, we touch the bottom, exhale more, we pause there as well. We want to get out of our reactivity and into this measured response, this deep rhythm. Tap into a 
powerful peace, a peaceful power, a focus, a presence that is our birthright. A few more breaths here like that. Can you fill up even more? Back body expands and lifts. And at the bottom, is there any more to pour out? And then can you just sit there, still and quiet, empty? Notice any discomfort throughout your practice. Pain is one thing, we want to address it immediately. Discomfort or being uncomfortable or being challenged, we want to recognize this and not run from it. Notice what you do. Do you fidget? Do you time travel? Do you put up walls? Do you run? It's time to stand in that stuff. Be uncomfortable. Be challenged. And in response, stand firm and breathe deeper still. You're welcome to stay like you are, just here, as long as you need. When you're ready, we're going to continue standing. There's no rush. And if you need to child's pose, or cat-cow, or down dog, right, whatever the dance is. And if you're ready, right, if you're ready, you get right to your feet, maybe. And then once you get there, right, we're, there's no rush, there's no rush. Once you get there, can you just stay steady? No matter what arises, and notice it, right? Notice the fidgets, notice the, the sensation, the discomfort, and just stand in it and breathe, keep breathing. And the efforts are to simply become more present. Closer to here, closer to now with each breath. Working with the physical body is a great way to do that. Spread the toes, work with the weight in the feet. They can be apart, they can be together, whatever suits you. And then work with the legs. Turn them on. Right? Grip the quadriceps to lift the kneecaps. Lift the kneecaps, there. And strong, supportive legs. And play with the pelvis, the hips, at the level, if they tipped one way or the other, work with that. From that deep connection, those deep roots, that strong support up through the legs, the balance, the stability of the hips, can we keep growing and learning and lifting? And, right? Lengthen the waist, lift the rib cage, lift the back body. Broaden the shoulders. I like to bring my hands, my palms to the side of my legs. And as I go broad through the shoulders and straight up through the spine, I reach the fingers for the floor. So already we're working the arms. You can stretch them here. Encouraging that soft energy in the palms. Fingers together, gather, collect. Back of the head lifts, chins drawn in and down. Breathe. Breathe. Notice the habit, the inclination, the story, to fidget, to move, to do something about the discomfort so that it goes away, to ignore it, to dismiss it. Maybe just feel it. Let it be felt. Where is it? Yeah, follow it deeper through all the different layers of your being. Find the root of it in your heart, in your mind, in your stories. The discomfort, the fidgeting, the dis-ease. Right? These are all effects of those deep-rooted stories. 
what you're seeing out in the streets, in the media, in your neighbors, is the effects of these deep-rooted stories. These are our karmas, and we're being smacked in the face with them. Let's do the work to change the story and rewrite one that is connected, that is loving, it's powerful and peaceful. Right? Notice the fidgets. What is it? What do you need to move away from? And can you just breathe? For a moment this morning, I considered keeping you here for an hour in Tadasana. Because I guarantee you, your shit will come up if it hasn't already. It's a good practice to be in that discomfort, to see our reactivity, to see our habitual response to this stuff, and to stay with it. What happened to the breath? What about the feet? Are the roots still deep? Or are you pulling away from even that? Keep breathing. I'm not going to keep you here for an hour. But we can imagine what would happen if we did, right? How uncomfortable we'd be. How all our stuff would come up. There's your work. Real simple here, top of our mats. Exhale completely, go all the way to empty. Real simple movement. Next inhale, we're going to float the arms up. Lifting the rib cage, we'll lift the chest, we'll lift the chin, we'll lift the gaze, we'll bring the palms together, we'll be there at full. And as you exhale, release your arms. Your breath, release your arms all the way back to the side body. Just do that a few more times. Your inhale, you lift your arms. Strong legs, long waist, lift the chest, lift the chin. Pause here at full, wait for your exhale, release your arms. Longer breath, slower movement. Right? Keep going. As you inhale, you respond. Speed of the movement is dictated by the length of the breath. Go all the way to full. Strong legs, long waist. Lift, lift, lift. Be there. Your exhale. You release your arms. Not your ribs, though. Not the legs. Keep the legs strong. The waist long. Go all the way to empty. Drop the chin and the arms. And keep going. One more. Finish this round. Do one more. Strong legs, long energized spine. Stretch the arms to top. Really reach the fingertips to the sky. And as you exhale, release. Chin, the arms, the shoulders, the breath, not the spine, not the legs. Go to empty. We'll add in the folds. Inhale, reach up. And as we exhale, we fold forward. Keep the legs strong, the spine long, unless you need to bend the knees to land the hands, drop the head empty. The inhale is to look forward, to lengthen forward, straight legs, long spine. That might bring the hands to the shins. As you exhale, fold again, go to empty. Keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling. As you inhale, you rise. Strong legs, spine lengthens forward, all the way up, reach up, look up. Exhale, release the arms, stand tall. Your rhythm, follow your breath. A few more rounds like this. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward, fold. Exhale more, drop the head, keep exhaling. Wait for your inhale, lengthen forward. Straight legs, long spine. 
Wait for your exhale, you fold, go all the way to empty. Your breath, you rise. And be here, make it sing for a moment, and then stand tall. Couple more. Keep following your breath, your inhale, you reach up. Enveloping the movement in breath. Lengthening, releasing, folding, all the way to the top. One more like that. back to the asana place, top of the mat, and just land in it. Notice what that stirred up. A couple deep breaths here. And we'll add to it. Inhale, reach. Circle the arms overhead, stretch. Keep the strength and the length as you exhale, dive, full forward. The lengthening the inhale is to get the hands to the floor so you can step back to a high plank. Take a couple breaths here. If the knees need to come down, if you need to skip, just work on your wrists or your elbows or your shoulders. Child's pose maybe is more appropriate. Otherwise, high plank. Push the floor away from you. Draw the front ribs into the body. Get strong. Zip up the core. Turn the legs on. Inhale. Lengthen. And then as you exhale, we're pressing back. Press the hips up and back. Soften the knees maybe towards that downward facing dog shape. A couple breaths here to check in with it. Inner hand pressing, right? Maybe bend the knees to tune into the arms, the side body, the spine. Push the front of the mat away from you to get longer. Hips further from the wrists. And then down through the legs as you exhale, maybe working one at a time. Eventually, inner hands pressing, arms gripped, spine, side body long, down through the legs, strong, gripping the quadriceps, lifting the kneecaps, pressing the heels deeper. Exhale completely here, downward facing dog. Next, inhale to slide forward, ripple forward to that high plank. I'm just going to go back and forth a few times. As you exhale, waving back, lifting the hips, dropping the head, strong legs, empty, do that again, inhale, waving forward. Long and strong here for a moment at full, and as you exhale, back through the breath, drop the head, downward facing dog. Do that twice more. Inhale, ride the breath forward. And of course the knees can come down, and as you exhale, it can be a child's pose instead of a down dog. You do you. One more time, forward, inhale. And then wave back as you exhale. Beautiful. Inhale forward again. This time as we exhale, we're going to lower to the floor. Drop the knees if you need, elbows in, and land at empty. Wait for the inhale to lengthen, lift the front body. We'll pulse a few times. Lengthen, lift the front body, roll the shoulders, be there. And as you exhale, lower. Right? And we'll do this wave a couple more times. You inhale to lift and lengthen. Now as you exhale, you can lower or you can stay up and just move a little bit. Maybe roll the shoulders and wiggle the hips. Inhale, lift again or lift higher. This time as you exhale and release, push back knees, tuck toes, downward facing dog. Beautiful. One breath this time. Inhale, lengthen forward to that high plank. 
Exhale, you can lower all the way or you lower halfway. Inhale to lengthen, lift the front body to that cobra shape or maybe an upward facing dog. And as you exhale, we release and press back, down dog, child's pose, handstand. What do you need, right? At any point, right? You're listening to what's going on for you and you're responding compassionately, directly with your intention, with your prayer, with your goal in mind, but right where you are, always. Exhale completely in your down dog. Take one more breath here, full breath in. Complete breath out. On empty, soften the knees, look forward as you inhale, travel, step, walk, or float, lengthen as you rise, same breath. Fold as you exhale to empty. Inhale, you rise. Heart forward, arms out, circle them overhead, reach up, look up. We're going to link these together as you exhale, fold all the way back down. Inhale to prepare, lengthen forward, set the hands, step or float, lower halfway or all the way. Modify as you need. Wait for the inhale to lengthen, lift the front body. Don't rush this. Go to full, lift up higher, fill up more. And it's your exhale that guides you back, downward facing dog. Just one breath here. Inhale to full. Exhale to empty. On empty, soften the knees, look forward as you inhale, travel, step or float, lengthening, same breath as you arrive. Fold as you exhale, there's no rush. Inhale to rise. You rise, we all rise, yeah? And then exhale, fold again, all the way back down. Inhale to lengthen, plant the hands, step or float, lower halfway or all the way. Skip the push-ups, add extra push-ups in if you like. Go to full length and lift within it. Wait for the exhale to cue you, to guide you back, downward facing dog. One breath here, go to full. Back to empty. On empty, soften, look forward as you inhale, travel, step or float, lengthen, same breath as you arrive. Fold as you exhale. Wait for the inhale to rise. Strong legs, long waist, lift up, reach up, look up, dive forward again, fold. Lengthen, inhale, set the hand, step or float. Right, follow your breath. Lengthen, lift, open up. All the way back, downward facing dog. Again, one breath here, full breath in. Complete breath out. When you're ready, no rush, soften, step or float as you inhale. That same inhale as you arrive to lengthen. Fold as you exhale, don't rush this either. Exhale more. Inhale to rise. Reach out, reach up. One more time. Dive as you exhale. Lengthen. Set the hands, step or float. Do your push-up or three or skip it. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Next inhale when you're ready, step or float. Same breath, smooth this out. Fold as you exhale. Inhale to the top, reach out, reach up, stretch up. Exhale, stand tall. And just land in it. Don't play with it. Feel it, let it be felt. Listen, let it be heard. Even if it's uncomfortable, breathe. Be committed to the work. We've only just begun. We've only just begun. And remember that we're already there. We'll play with this flow a little bit. Exhale completely here, go all the way to empty. As you inhale, reach up, look up, stretch up. As you exhale, dive forward, fold. The inhale is to prepare, lengthen, 
Set the hands. Of course, you can go straight to down dog or do your push-up. Lengthen, lift, open up. Exhale all the way back, downward facing dog, just to create a little bit more heat. Inhale, lift the right leg straight up and stay here for a few breaths. And play, you can skip this, of course. Stay with the lengthening maybe. You might need to bend the knee and open the hips and circle the leg around. I don't know. You listen, you respond. There. Coming back to center, press the front of the mat away. Inhale, lengthen. Now as we exhale, we're gonna draw the right knee towards the nose, rocking forward, squeezing in, empty. And as you inhale, lift up and back again, lengthen. And as you exhale, again, knee to nose, squeeze in, go to empty, wait for the inhale, lift up and back one more time, lengthen. And again, as you exhale, squeeze in. This time, stay here one breath. Inhale, puff up. Exhale, press in, squeeze out and then look forward. Step the right foot to the right thumb. Turn the left heel in. So set the feet, toes angled forward, lunge into the right leg, squaring the hips. Beautiful, Seth. Inhale, lengthen and lift towards that warrior one shape. Right. Whatever the inquiry needs to look like, check back in on the feet. Make sure that left leg is strong. Right. We're as deep into that le right leg, as a squaring level pelvis will allow. Draw the front ribs in, lift all the ribs up. Lift the shoulders, lift the arms, any other arm variations that suit what's going on for you right now, of course. Perfect. A few more breaths here. Deeper and deeper and deeper with each one. All the way to empty, there's no rush. Two more breaths, maybe. Exhale. One more full breath here, full breath in. Complete breath out. Last inhale, make it sing, full pose for you, inhale. Now as you exhale, release the thumbs down to the center of the chest. Lift that back heel, so turn, yeah, there we go. Right, lean forward a little bit, gather your strength, focus your gaze to help with balance. When you're ready, we're gonna lift that back leg. It might take three steps. Lift the back leg and tip forward towards that warrior three pose, right? And this might just be about not falling for you, and that's cool, right? Work with the ankle, work with balance, be there. Otherwise, strong in that right leg. Drop the left hip, lift the left heel, lift the heart, extend the arms if you're playing with that. Moving towards that full shape for you. Got a bit more work here to do, so stay with it. One more breath here, full breath in. Complete breath out. Now listen carefully as you inhale, soften the right knee, bend the left knee and lift it through and up, standing tall on one leg and just right here for a few moments. Right, you can hold that knee if you need to. Get the breath. Inhale, lift it. Now as you exhale, we're gonna tip back into that shape. So spine parallel to the floor, extend that left leg back one more time, one more breath here, full pose, full breath in. Complete breath out. And as you inhale, bend the right knee, hands to the floor, left foot way back, step the right foot back. And as you exhale, either straight to down dog or go through your flow, halfway or all the way. Lengthen, lift, open up. All the way back, downward facing dog. We'll take one breath here. You take more if you need. Exhale completely. Other side. Left leg lifts up. Same few breaths here to inquire, to maybe press the front of the mat away and really lengthen. You can open the hips and bend the knee and circle the rest. Whatever the work is. There you go. And when you're ready, you come back to center and really lengthen. Push the front of the mat away from you, lengthen out through that left heel. And as you exhale, knee to nose, rocking forward, squeezing in, up and back again. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze. One more time like that, up and back. Squeeze in. We lift one more time. Inhale, reach up through that left leg. 
Exhale, squeeze, knee towards the nose or the forehead. Stay here, one breath. Push the floor away, inhale. Exhale, stay. And as you inhale, look forward, step left foot, left hand. Turn the right heel in, there's no rush. Set the foundation, turn the legs on, squaring the hips as you inhale. Upright, the spine, readdress the feet if you need, into the legs, the hips, front ribs draw in, lift them, lift the shoulders, maybe the arms. There you go. Fear of Adrasana 1, Warrior 1. Strong back leg, outer edge right foot pressing. Deep into that left leg. And that's relative for you. Draw the front ribs in. Lift all the ribs up. Couple more breaths here. Whatever arm variations you need. One more breath. All the way out. Inhale, make it sing. Full pose. As you exhale, draw the thumbs to your chest. Lift the back heel, lean forward. If you need to step or walk the foot in, to lift and tip. Find balance. There you go. And again, you might just be working with that left ankle. Do that work. Honor that work. Right? And then get up through that left leg eventually. Drop the right hip, lift the right heel, lift the heart. Whatever arm variations you're working with, be there fully. Exhale completely. One more full breath here, full breath in. Complete patient breath out. Soften the left knee, bend the right leg as you inhale, sweep the knee forward and up, stand tall on one leg. You might not be comfortable, but here we are. Keep breathing. Don't run. There you go. One more full breath here. Lift the knee higher, maybe. Exhale completely. And as you inhale back to that warrior three shape, tip forward, extend that right leg back. Catch it for one breath. Deep breath in. Complete breath out. Soften that front knee as you inhale, land the hand, step the right foot back, the left foot back. You go through your flow or straight to down dog. Downward facing dog eventually. Just one breath here. Full breath in. Complete breath out. On empty, soften the knees, look forward as you inhale, step or float. As you arrive, lengthen. As you exhale, fold. As you inhale, rise, reach up. And as you exhale, stand tall. away from reactivity. You want to move away from dismissing or dissonance or fidgeting or knowing. It's really powerful when we start to understand that we don't know and these days are a perfect opportunity for that. Most of you on my screen have no idea what this stuff feels like. I'm included in that. You don't really know. And maybe now we're starting to understand and know that we don't know. So we're listening. We're listening to the ones who do. And we're learning from them. Where's your heartbeat? Feel it. Deep in your breath, deep in your heart. Feel it. Let it hit you. Beautiful. 
from the top of your mat. We're gonna take a big step with the right foot. Face the side. Left toes in, right toes out. Nice wide stance. We're gonna bend into the right leg. The deeper you go into your right leg, the more you press outer edge left foot. Left leg is strong. And we consider lifting the right hip and wrapping the left seat under so the hips are level. There you go. And again, we're as deep into that right leg as makes sense. Right? We're lifting the ribs, we're lifting the spine, lifting straight up through the crown. Right? We're gonna do that arm work that we did a couple weeks ago. Yeah. We're gonna inhale and lift the arms to shoulder height. And exhale here. Now as you inhale, lift the arms up, reach up, maybe even look up. And as you exhale, bend the arms, drop the elbows, cactusing them empty. As you inhale, bring the forearms, the elbows and the palms together. And as you exhale, extend the arms straight forward. Inhale, sweep the arms back to shoulder height, warrior two. Exhale here, just like that, twice more. Inhale, arms lift. Maybe lift the gaze. And if you exhale, drop the elbows, cactus the arms, empty. Inhale, bring the elbows and the palms together, all the way to full. Exhale, extend forward, empty. Inhale, sweep the arms open. Exhale here, one more time, this side, strong left leg. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale to empty, drop the elbows. Inhale, bring it together. Exhale, extend forward. Inhale, sweep open. Exhale, land here. One full breath, full pose, full breath in. Complete breath out. Inhale, straighten the right leg, release the arms, switch the feet. Right toes in, left toes out. Same inquiry. As we bend into the left leg, we press outer edge right foot. Right leg strong, work to lift the right hip up, left hip up, sorry, wrap the right seat under, spine upright, as deep into that front leg as we can manage. Inhale, add the arms. Exhale here. Three times, your breath, inhale, lift. Reach up, maybe look up. Exhale, drop the elbows. You want more of a challenge, you can close your eyes. Inhale, bring it together in front of you, stretching the space between the shoulder blades. Exhale, extend forward. Inhale, sweep open. Exhale, land a little bit deeper maybe. Twice more, inhale, arms reach. Exhale, cactus them, drop the elbows. Inhale, together in front of you. Exhale, extend forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, maybe land a little bit deeper. Strong right leg, one more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, land deep. One full breath, full pose. Exhale. Beautiful. Inhale, straighten the left leg, release the arms, left toes in, bring the hands to the hips. If you need to move a little bit, move a little bit. When you're ready, plant the feet, legs are strong, tail plugged. Inhale, lift the front body, lengthen the front body. Keep that lift and length as you exhale. Tip forward and fold. When you can, bring the hands to the floor. If you can't reach the floor, maybe take the feet wider. If you still can't reach the floor, take the feet wider. And if you still can't reach the floor, grab the blocks or the props or the coffee table or the chairs. And then do the work here, right? And you guys know this stuff, right? Shift the weight forward and back maybe. Find that place where the seat's in line with the heels. Outer edge is connected, toes spread, legs strong. If straight, strong legs means you don't fold as deep as you want to, then you don't fold as deep as you want to. Right? 
Yeah, work beautiful. Perfect, Melissa. Yeah, back off a little bit. Work the legs, lift the kneecaps, stable joints, long waist, and use the breath to draw you deeper and deeper and deeper. Whatever variations you're working with, a couple more breaths. One more breath. How about one more here? Full breath in, strong legs, long waist, complete breath all the way in. You're welcome to stay longer. When you're ready, inhale, lengthen forward. From here, we're gonna heel toe the feet in until they're about as wide as the hips, heels in, toes out, and we're gonna squat straight down. Okay. Whatever version of Malasana you wanna play with, Eventually, it's heels together and we wrap the arms around the legs behind you. You can play with that stuff. Maybe you're sitting on blocks or books. You can curl in. You can bring the elbows to the knees and lift up. If you wanted to play with crow bakasana, of course, you're always welcome to. Or maybe you're just listening. Breathing. Steady. Available. Receptive. A few more breaths to stay or play. Nice team, Jada. All the way back. We'll meet in that squat. All right. And when you're ready, you can stay longer. When you're ready, we're going to lift the hips, straighten the legs, take the toes forward again, just sort of hang over the legs for a moment. And then in your way, either lift or roll all the way back up to standing. Yeah, right where you are, land here. I'm gonna take the feet wide again. Nice wide stance. This time we're gonna take the heels in and the toes out. Yeah? And just to mark this place for a moment, bend into the knees, so sit down a little bit and find this sort of deep goddess squat. Knees are wide, tails plugged, spine is upright. Okay, feet are planted and balanced. And then straighten the legs for a moment. We're gonna add the arms in. Yeah. Inhale, lift the arms up. And as you exhale, we're gonna cross above the elbows. Right arm under left maybe first. Cross above the elbows if you can. Wrap the forearms around, palms together, or whatever suits you. Maybe you're just giving yourself a hug. Sink that in, right? Lift the elbows, and you take the hands further away from you. Inhale, lift, and then you exhale, sit down. Perfect. Knees pressing away, tail plug, spine upright. Roll the shoulders around if you need to. Right. Breathe here. How deep can you go? We got a couple more breaths. Tail plug, front ribs in. Working with the shoulders, the upper back, the neck, the arms, the breath. Exhale completely. And then next inhale to straighten the legs, release the arms, maybe even let them swing for a moment, roll the shoulders. We'll do the other side. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, left arm under right, or cross the other way, above the elbows if you can, wrap the forearms, bring the hands together. Right? Work with whatever you're doing, back the hands together maybe, so give yourself a hug. Inhale, lift. Exhale, sit. All right, there can be a bit of movement as you plug the tail and press the knees wide, feet are planted, lift the ribs, maybe the elbows and the hands lift, maybe they move away from you a bit. Right, again, movement might be the way through. A couple more breaths here. How about one more? Exhale. Nice and easy as you inhale. Straighten the legs, release the arms, 
Maybe let them swing a bit. <sighs> yeah, one of those. All right, toes in, heels wide again. Nice wide stance. We're gonna fold, but now that our shoulders are good, we're gonna take the arms in behind us and lace the fingers together. If the shoulders are really good, you can roll the shoulders back and down and bring the palms together. If not, maybe the head of the shoulders stay forward, the palms stay apart. Inhale, lift, strong legs. And as you exhale, fold. If the way is clear, you go, but I prefer to keep my thumbs on my sacrum until I find that fold again. So find your fold, maybe. Right? Balance and support and steady. And then lift the knuckles for the ceiling. Like get some lift and length before working the arms overhead. Right? And know that if your thumbs need to stay on your sacrum, that you're blessed. You don't have as far to go to practice and you're still doing the work right where you are. And if the hands come to the floor, great. If they don't, great. Couple more breaths here. Still working the legs and the spine. Maybe rocking the shoulders a little bit to work a little bit deeper. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. How about one more breath here? All the way out. And then when you're ready, maybe it's a sweeping inhale. Thumbs back to sacrum. Lift all the way back up. You do you, though. As you arrive, release the hands. Heel, toes, step or hop the feet together. And just land in. Don't fidget. Right? Stop. Listen. Remember, you don't know. How could you possibly know what comes next? And just see how you apply your stories to these fresh spaces that are created moment by moment by moment, endless possibility, and we're limiting them to make ourselves more comfortable, or insulated, or safe. And to do that, we're using these old stories that are oppressing others, that are moving us further apart. Challenge all of it, even the impulse to scratch your butt. And when you're ready, graceful step, top of the mat. Exhale completely here. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, dive forward, fold. Inhale to lengthen. You go for your push-ups or you go straight to down dog. You do you. Right. We'll meet in a downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths to get there or a couple breaths if you go straight there. All right. One more here, full breath in. Complete breath out. We're going to inhale, come forward to a high plank. We'll drop the knees for a moment to drop the elbows, the forearms come down, and then lift the knees back up. I'll join you. But we'll do this together. Right? Forearms plank. Of course, if the knees need to stay down, they stay down. But if they can lift, they lift. Right? And if you want to play with that forearm balance, you're always welcome to. You can walk the feet in. You kick up, float up, even use the wall or your partner. Right? Otherwise, stay in this forearm plank. Get uncomfortable. Challenge yourself to grow, to get stronger. Keep breathing. We've got a couple more breaths here at least. You can lift your knees now or pretend you did it the whole time. But one more breath. Full breath in. Complete breath out. And then nice and smooth. We drop the knees. We drop the hips. We drop the forehead. 
and we slide the arms back beside it. Okay? Feet together, legs together, forehead straight down. Right? You can keep the hands on the floor beside you, palms up or down, or lace the fingers again at your feet. Roll the shoulders away from the floor. Exhale completely. And as you inhale, lift the chest, which will lift the head. Keep the shoulders rolling, maybe lifting the ribs a little bit. Right? You can stay like this, or maybe you float the legs as well. Yeah. And if the fingers are laced behind you, maybe you lift the hands off the seat and reach the knuckles for the heels. Perfect. You can stay like this. Or we're going to play a little bit. You can come out and back in anytime you like. From here, bend the knees. Reach back for the ankles, for the shins, into that Dandurasana boat pose. And then release the feet and come back to Shalabhasana. Right? And then we we'll do that again. Bend the knees. Work to catch the shins of the ankles. You can skip this nonsense if you like. And then release the feet again back to Shalabhasana. You might still be here the whole time. Maybe you lowered and now you're coming back up. If you're on the floor, you can bend the legs there and work to catch the ankles or the shins. And again, lift up. This time, stay. Stay five breaths. Right? Maybe kicking the legs back to pull on the arms, to pull on the shoulders, the chest, lift higher. Maybe the thighs stay down and you're working to lift the ribs. Maybe everything's lifting. And you go one more breath here. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, stay. And then nice and easy as you inhale, releasing the legs, releasing the forehead, turn a cheek, feet land, arms land. Breathe. Breathe. Maybe turn the other cheek. And if there's a message here, right, you stay. When you're ready, right, when you're ready, we flip over. So turn over onto your back. Draw the knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a hug, a squeeze, a little rock, a little roll. And do one more back bend. Yeah. At least one more back bend. I like to stay in these back bends longer and longer and longer. It can be low, that bridge pose with a block or something underneath your sacrum. And if you're ready, right, of course you can plant the hands beside the ears to the floor to lift up to Urdhva Danyarasana. Okay, so set the feet to the floor. And then you do you. Right? Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Right? So plant the feet. If it's that lower bridge, shoulders stay down, you lift the hips up. And you're working the shoulders deeper underneath you to lace the fin fingers together eventually underneath you. Again, you can place a block or a prop under your sacrum, not your spine, to support the hips. I like to take a little back bend nap right there. If you're working without the support, then you're checking and rolling the shoulders deeper and getting the arms more underneath you and lifting the hips higher. And maybe you're staying. And if you lift it all the way up, stay. Right? Of course, if there's pain, we recognize it, we honor it, we move away from it. But if it's just discomfort, if it's just a challenge, if you're just being pushed to your edge a little bit, then stay. Breathe. There you go. And of course, if you need to back off, then you back off. If you can come back in, come back in. Hips forward if you're in Kana, with Strasana. Deep, deep, deep breath. And if you've come out, we've got time, you can come back in. We've got time to come out and come back in if you need a bit of a break. How about five more breaths? Long front body. Deep roots down through your feet, working the legs, lifting the hips, chest to chin, chin away from chest. 
Beautiful. Keep breathing. How about three more? And if three more breaths is easy, then six more, nine more, twelve more. You stay. Maybe one more breath here. And when you're ready to come out, carefully, slowly, mindfully, lower back down and just take a few moments, landed. Maybe feet a little further, a little bit wider, knees touch each other. Let the lower back land. Listen. Notice your inclination to address this stuff right away. To erase it or run away from it or dismiss it. Just sit in it. Learn from it. And then when you're connected to what's going on, you can respond. And that might be wiping the knees from side to side. It might be drawing the knees in towards the chest. Whatever you need. Perfect place for a twist. Yeah. Maybe you bend the knees again and bring the feet to the floor. What I would do is shift your hips over to the left a little bit, lift the knees up towards the chest, and take the legs over to the right. Working to keep that left shoulder rolled down to the floor. Any organization of the legs, right? They can splay apart if you need space. The knees can be together, you can encourage them with your hand, you can squeeze something between your knees. And if there's space around you and within you, maybe you extend the legs long and catch the foot. At least five breaths here. breath or two when you're ready to come back through center and go the other way. So bring the hips back, take them over to the right this time, lift the knees up so you can roll all the way to the outer left hip. Allow yourself to be guided. Few breaths here. Sure, you get complete on this side. Another breath or two, maybe, before coming back to center. Perfect place to squeeze the knees in, give yourself a hug. All 
rock side to side. And then eventually, I mean, you can simply sit up if you prefer, or go straight to Shavasana at any point, but maybe with the knees hugged in, we rock back and forth. So we come up towards the seat, and we rock back again, and the legs come overhead towards the floor. And maybe do that three, four, five times. You might even land the feet and lift the seat for a moment. You can play with that. Right? Eventually, maybe the next time you come up to your seat, you stay, extend your legs straight out in front of you. There you go. Whatever support you need underneath you, if you need a low block or a blanket, or a strap to catch the feet maybe. Take a moment here to lift the ribs off the hips, maybe wiggle the seat back a little. Inhale, lift. And as you exhale, walk the hands forward. Right? And see what we can catch. Can you catch the ankles or the outer feet? I like to go over top the toes. So catch over top the toes. Right? Some of us are really open in the back body, so maybe there's a block under your feet that you're reaching for. Right? And maybe it's a strap. Maybe you're still basically upright using a strap or a scarf or a shirt to draw yourself a bit deeper, wherever you need to be. Right? And then I've talked about this most weeks. One of my favorite things to do here is ratchet myself a little bit deeper. So holding over top the toes, pressing the toe mounds away to draw myself deeper into the fold, keep myself deep in the fold, and then pull the toes back towards me. You do that a few times. Ratchet yourself a little bit deeper by pressing the toe mounds away. And then stay. And then stay. Let's say 10 breaths here. By all means, stay longer, going deeper. And if you feel complete, it might be nice to release the hands and walk yourself back upright. Maybe a quick counter pose. Take the hands behind you. You can bend the knees or keep the legs straight. Press down, lift the hips up, lengthen, lift, 
front body, open those hip flexors again. Stretch here for a moment. And when you're ready, bring the seat back down. Okay, and as you land, I'd invite you to just stay upright in a seat a little bit longer. Maybe add a block underneath you. Grounded, balanced, lifted, shoulders broad, hand position supporting all that. Lift the back body, the back of the head as well. Draw the chin in and down. Just turn exclusively to the breath. Still in that ujjayi technique. Play with the rhythm a little bit. Samavritti, your same effort. Or box breath, some of us call it. Exhale completely where you are. I want you to find your count. And it's the same all the way around. Inhale to three or four or five. Pause at full for the same count of three or four or five. And then exhale, same count. Three, four or five. Be empty for the same count, three or four, and all the way around again. Inhale your count. Pause for the same count. Exhale, samavritti. Pause it empty. Inhale, just keep going around. Inhale and exhale, same count. The pauses in between, same count. Square a box with equal sides. Focused only on these efforts. Whatever arises. Thoughts, emotions, impulses, just fall back behind. Don't engage. You're busy with pranayama technique. Maybe once or twice more around. When I'm done with this technique, I like to just drop all of it, all effort. Just float. Doing nothing. Moving towards being everything.
led, guided, as you need. Maybe you stay just like this. Maybe you slide back into Shavasana. And if you do lie back, feet are wide, the arms are wide, the body, the physical body is supported. Something under the knees, maybe under the head, maybe a blanket over top. Releasing all effort. Ankles, the knees, the hips, the wrists, the elbows, the arms. Legs, limbs, relax. Let gravity draw the spine and the head deeper. The eyes sink deeper. Let the jaw go. Eventually let even the breath go. and relax. Completely relax.
invitation here always to get complete. You stay longer if you need. When you're ready, come back to breath. Little movements, fingers and toes. Eventually get bigger, wrists and ankles. Maybe the legs stretch long, the arms reach overhead, that long morning stretch. And let go. Eventually the knees will draw in so you can roll to a side, maybe the right for a few moments. Again, you're welcome to stay here. I'll come all the way back up. Find a seat, grounded, balanced, centered. Even just that skill, that ability to get grounded, to get balanced, to find center, will serve you. in this healing, in this learning, in this coming together. Take a few moments here again to reflect, feel the effects of our practice, our effort, to listen, to learn. Remember, it's important to be able to come to these spaces with integrity. You don't have to be perfect, you just have to be committed to the work. To be able to say, I don't know, and I still have work to do. And to ask for help. To seek out support. And through all of that, we can encourage each other. Remembering that we don't, none of us win until we all win. No one can be excluded from this story. Feel that. That includes the police. That includes the racists. Of course it does. This peaceful new story of interbeing, of oneness, has to include everyone. Everything, every being, all the animals, the earth, the sky, the water. It includes the most lost amongst us. not really home until we're all there. Maybe bring your hands together again, your thumbs to the center of your chest, that heart space. As always, I want to finish in gratitude. but also maybe with a commitment, recommitting, committing again and again and again to this work. Whatever yours is. Every corner needs to be swept clean. Every one of us has a part to play in that. And I really am grateful that you keep showing up, doing the work, helping to walk me and mine home as well. 
Until next time. Thank you.